These are the funniest of the funny. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Comedy Central shows. Samuel Jackson, being painstakingly by me, Samuel L. Jackson, it'll get you drunk. Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at series that air or aired on Comedy Central. We're only looking at original series, though. So as much as we would love to include Futurama, it only aired its final two seasons on Comedy Central, and as such, will not be eligible. Yeah, we're back. Yeah! Yeah! Number 10, Nathan For You. I mean, okay. as a whole, the store could just be called Dumb Starbucks. Right, that's okay, I see what you're saying. Nathan Fielder plays a fictionalized version of himself who helps struggling businesses with outlandish ideas. After all, he got really good grades in business school. His fully committed performance is one of the most cringe-inducing things on television, but in the best possible way. These ideas often snowball into ridiculous situations, which the clients reluctantly go along with, and sometimes, despite the odds, are actually successful. I'm proud to announce that we'll soon be opening a second dumb Starbucks location in Brooklyn, New York within the next two weeks. <laughs> he continually manages to up the ante and surprise us, sometimes even tiptoeing the line between legal and illegal. For a pseudo-reality show, it's especially unbelievable that people go along with these outrageous scenarios. But as viewers, we're happy they do. We're trying to make it seem like a man by that name left a big tip at a restaurant. Okay. And for that, I'd be willing to pay you a thousand dollars. Number nine, drawn together. The minute I met my new housemates, I felt like they were members of my family, only much, much poorer. Drawn Together was billed as the first animated reality show, which put together characters parodying different animation styles. It includes a colorful cast of characters, from a racist princess, to a gay video game adventurer, to a psychotic Pikachu spoof. The dark pastiche of kid-friendly shows is often shocking but always funny, as aided by a wonderful veteran voice cast. I was just jealous. I too always wanted to be a dancer as well also, but I didn't have the talent. So I tortured you relentlessly until you became a sociopathic killer, crushing your dreams. My bad. Despite only lasting three seasons, the series has since gained a cult following, with the cast returning for a film three years after the series cancellation, joined by Seth MacFarlane. Don't come any closer. Israel has boundary issues. <laughs> Number eight, Workaholics. Well, that wasn't accident waiting to happen. Workaholics is a bit of a misnomer, since this show follows three underachieving college dropouts as they try to be adults. Kind of. Blake, Adam, and Durs work at a telemarketing company, where their immaturity and laziness causes conflict with their co-workers. This allows side characters, like Jillian and Alice, to steal the show when given the spotlight. Look, you guys know what I'm about. Putting uh, up the, the numbers. numbers. That's right. I put up the numbers like you put your thumbs up each other's butts. These best friends live to mess with each other and find endless joy in setting each other up for failure, often to fantastic effect. They might be downright awful people, but the actor's comedic charm brings a certain likability to the man children. Write that down. Take it sleazy and I'm out or my last words and I'm killing myself. What the hell does any of that even mean? Take it sleazy! <laughs> Number seven, Broad City. I'm gonna get those taxes did. I'll hop on the Q18, catch the N, and then transfer to the R and get home in a tight 95 because the G ain't running. With Amy Poehler executive producing, how could this show have gone wrong? Broad City follows the misadventures of best friends Abby and Alana. Abby is a perpetually awkward weirdo, and Alana is an eccentric stoner, while delightfully odd side characters round out the cast. Nobody's perfect. I'm not a perfect dentist. I eat candy all the time. I got like six cavities. The show manages to walk the fine line of being a perfectly realistic microcosm of the millennial experience, while also being extravagantly bizarre. These ladies are two of the funniest characters currently on television, and their chemistry is downright explosive. The bottomless mimosas aren't on the menu anymore. Are you kidding me? No, no they're no nowhere. Sign. This is so unfair. God. In recent years, they've begun to take a larger role in writing and directing, establishing themselves as two of comedy's biggest rising stars. Yes, queen! Yes, queen! Yes, queen! Yes, queen! <laughs> Number six, Reno 911. I don't want to work here without a mustache. I really don't. 
I don't want to work here either. Well, you have a very light mustache, so lucky you. In the mid-2000s, Cops was a staple of reality television. Naturally, a show about people being arrested for a variety of ridiculous reasons led the way to this fantastic parody. This series, following the antics of fictional police in Reno, Nevada, ups the ante of the show it takes inspiration from by introducing some seriously bizarre criminals. Is that CSI? Are you, are you a CSI? The cast of outrageous law enforcers dealing with complicated and taboo issues finds its specific tone thanks to the actors' improvisational skills. The show was so popular it spawned a feature film spin-off that managed to capture everything we loved in the series. You know you're driving, right? <laughs> Number 5. Key and Peel. Michael Jackson! Woo! Oh, no. Here it is. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peele make one of the best comedy duos in recent memory, and they launch their post Mad TV careers with this brilliant sketch comedy series. The two deliver in every episode by fully committing to a plethora of bizarre characters. Their recurring characters are too numerous to count, but the narcissistic Megan and Obama's anger translator both deserve special shout outs. Hey, all y'all dictators out there, keep messing around and see what happens. Just see what happens. Watch! Both Key and Peele won a handful of awards for their work on the show, and were particularly praised for the racial commentary the series offered up. They've both managed to find success after the series, with Jordan Peele writing and directing a little horror movie you might have heard of. Sorry, man. Okay. Get out! Yo! Yo! Chill, man! Get out! Chill! Get out! Chill! Chill, man! Chill! Get the out Number 4. The Colbert Report. Before taking over The Late Show on CBS, Stephen Colbert made a name for himself with this Daily Show spinoff. In it, he plays a fictionalized version of himself that parodies conservative news pundits like Bill O'Reilly. What does that mean? I am sorry I was wrong. What is that? I don't know that. I've never seen those words before in my life. What? It's an, it's an apology. You mean like I made a mistake? I'm not research. His admittedly strange sense of humor served him well, as he tackled various issues from politics to pop culture. Forever pursuing the concept of truthiness, he was unafraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very people he was lampooning, bringing his biting satire to the encounters. Other shows would later try to mimic his faux conservatism, but none reached the heights of Colbert's comic ability. The dark forces trying to silence my message of core conservative principles mixed with youth-friendly product placement have been thwarted. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Number 3. Chappelle Show Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dave Chappelle offered his unique brand of humor to Comedy Central in 2003 with his iconic sketch comedy series. Playing a wide swath of characters, Chappelle used his platform to take a comical approach to racial issues, stereotypes, and figures from pop culture history. He tackled these subjects boldly and eloquently, but most of all, hilariously. Drugs and alcohol have ruined my life. Some of the most memorable characters include crack addict Tyrone Biggums, white news anchor Chuck Taylor, and legendary hater Silky Johnson. Though it only lasted three seasons, its legacy is still felt today, paving the way for shows like Key and Peele and taking on race in a way few other shows have dared to try. Good evening and welcome to the first and maybe only racial draft here in New York City. Number 2. The Daily Show Welcome to The Daily Show! My name is John Stewart! In 1996, Craig Kilborn debuted this late-night talk show, but it wasn't until John Stewart took over the role in 1999 that the series really found its footing and voice. Stewart took the show in a more political direction, earning it critical acclaim, multiple Peabody Awards, and dozens of primetime Emmys. Trevor Noah took over as host in 2015, continuing the impressive comic streak of his predecessor. I mean, he must be the first human being in history who gets to command an army after starring in a Pizza Hut commercial. <laughs> in addition to its excellent hosts, it launched the careers of comedy icons such as Samantha Bee, John Oliver, Stephen Colbert, and many more. With over 3,000 episodes and counting, it's become a staple of Comedy Central's lineup. Really? You don't hear her complaining about it? You should maybe watch her when she appears on the Sean Hannity show. 
Before we unveil our top pick, here's an honorable mention. Tonight, we were supposed to have a gun nut on, but in light of recent events, I thought that seemed a bit insensitive. And that's coming from me. So instead, we got it. <laughs> Welvin the Great is here. Who? These nuts. <laughs> Number one, South Park. Oh my God, they killed Kenny, you bastard! Matt Stone and Trey Parker's satirical masterpiece has become a pop culture phenomenon since its 1997 debut. It follows the citizens of South Park, Colorado, a small town where insane things seem to happen every week. By poking fun at anything and everything, it's one of the boldest things ever to hit television, winning five Emmys and spawning a movie and multiple video games. Over 20 years after its debut, it remains as funny, topical, and popular as ever. We hope we never see the day that we have to process current events without Stan, Kyle, Kenny, Cartman, or even Butters. Butters! Oh, hamburgers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.